Hello and welcome to another episode of Mile Point 3 Garage. Today we're going to lay some paint, finally. Uh, Dust Canyon Copper. So, I didn't want to show you guys again the priming of the car, but I think I primed this thing like literally five, five times maybe. Um, I'm priming it, sanding it, priming it, sanding it, cutting it, priming it, sanding it, and, and so there's there was a lot to this. Uh, the body was not in bad shape, obviously. You guys saw the Bronco come to me, uh, and most of the sheet metal is new, but we did have like a, a hood that had been previously uh, on the vehicle and uh, things like that. So <clears throat> there were some panels that needed to be worked on. So the noise, we've got some fans going, so I finished the booth. Um, somewhat. So I've got intake there. I've got exhaust down there. We're not uh, completely sealed up yet uh, because I'm not doing the I'm not doing the exterior of the vehicle uh, today. All I'm doing today is to get used to spraying color because I haven't sprayed color before. Uh, I'm going to do the under panels, so I'm going to do the uh, the entire front clip that is underneath uh, the fenders and front grille and the hood. So all of this is going to get painted today. I'm going to do the rockers uh, and the door jams uh, so that when I put the doors on, uh, it will, uh, you know, I won't have to paint that. I'm also going to do the inside of the doors. Uh, the back side of the grill, the, see what else is there? Uh, and the back side of the fenders and the, um, and the dash. So I'm gonna do all those uh, today. I'm gonna get two coats of color and uh, a coat or two of clear on it tonight. Uh, I'm gonna let it flash about 20 minutes in between. The clear is actually, I think, 10 minutes. And then um, I'm using all low VOC stuff just because uh, it was available. So I thought it might be easier to, after building the booth, do it with low VOC um, that way. Anyway, uh, so let's get started. I'm gonna go mix some paint. Let's get the uh, first look at the color here. I'm really excited about this copper. I hope it's not too light. I don't want it to be orangey. Um, I kind of wanted the original color of this Bronco was brown. Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. That is sexy. Hope I don't screw this up. So I mixed it up, I thought, pretty well. Look at that. Hey now. I don't know what all that black in there is. Maybe it's because I haven't mixed it up enough. So I'll mix it up a little bit more. See if I can't get the metallic uh, mixed up pretty well. Because I know metallic settles and I don't want to uh, have like real thick metallic on any one part of the vehicle. Trying to figure out what that black is on there. Seems very strange. It's black. There's like black in it for some reason. Is that part of the metallic? I don't know, but it's floating and it like streaks it. Well, we've had it for what, a year? Yeah, but it lasts longer than that. Yeah, but. I'm going to spray it and see what happens. Temperature change. This probably just needs to be really Well, good. temperature change. I've kept it in the house. I don't know what this uh, black is on here. You can see the black kind of running off. I've mixed it and mixed it and mixed it. Maybe it's part of it. Maybe I've had it too long. I'll find out. That's why I'm painting the jams first. That way if I screw something up, uh, at least it's not the outside of the vehicle. So we're going to go... Uh, we're going to go a 4-1-1 on this. And 
make sure I got the 411 pointed towards me. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Probably gonna waste more paint spilling it than I'm gonna be. I wondered if I had enough paint. If this was gonna be enough. And now I'm starting to think maybe it's not gonna be enough. Maybe one part activator. And then I'm gonna reduce this down a little bit too. For no particular reason. Just want it to spray nice. Just want it to spray nice. All right, one part reducer. Let's mix this up. Well, I didn't finish. I didn't finish the jams and the hood. I didn't get it done because right in the middle of my paint, um, my compressor quit again. And this time it wasn't, uh, if you look back in the videos, uh, a few, like last winter in October when I was planning on getting this painted the first time, my compressor quit on me. The thermal fuse actually blew, and the thermal fuse is inside the armature of the motor, so it's really hard to get to. Um, obviously, I'd done it before, so I could get it done pretty quick, but at that point, it was almost too late. I didn't have the heater in, and that pretty much ruined my paint for uh, for the fall. And then fast forward a really long time now, I'm starting to paint, and then right in the middle of my paint, uh, my compressor dies again. This time, it's not the thermal switch. This time it's the exhaust tube. And uh, my assumption is, I haven't fixed it yet, but my assumption is is that um, the gaskets blew on the inside of the uh, of these nuts and it was leaking air. It wouldn't pressurize past 40 PSI. Uh, obviously I can't paint with a compressor that's only at 40 PSI. Um, it was starting to uh, kind of splatter paint everywhere, so I stopped. Luckily, it was splattering paint on the underside of the hood, so I I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, so this this will get fixed. I'm gonna fix this and we'll be done with it. Let's talk about the paint real quick. So um, you noticed that in the in the beginning of this video, I was showing you when I was mixing the paint, there was black that kept coming up to the top, and I was worried about that being um, maybe because the paint had been here for 
eight months and that maybe something had gone bad in it. Uh, but looking at it, looking at it now, uh, it looks like it's interesting. You have the, the, the copper color and then over the top of the copper color, almost, almost everywhere on the car, uh, there's a thin layer of black on top of it and it gives it a really awesome look. Uh, I like it a lot. I haven't even gotten it out in the sun yet, but you can tell when you put a light directly up to it, um, the black kind of disappears and the copper comes out and it looks really cool. Here's the problem though. It says that you can um, reduce it by one part, by one full part if you want to. So I did, to try to make it easier to spray. Also to get the paint to go a little further because I'm doing more than I thought I would uh, with the copper. Um, but on vertical surfaces, I think that was too thin. Um, on some of the vertical surfaces it was fine, but on other parts of the vertical surface, as you can tell, I'll show you. You can see right here, uh, it ran. Uh, it didn't run everywhere, uh, so this is my fault. Uh, but I also think that if I hadn't reduced it as much, that it would, uh, it would look better. So that looks really nice. And I did all the jams uh, with one coat. I still have another coat to go. Obviously, I'm going to have to scuff it now because uh, I have time in between. And then uh, got the inside. Uh, I'm actually going to, uh, from the inside of the quarters all the way down to the edge of the uh, of the bed here, just about to right there. This is all going to be um, uh, bed linered. So I decided I wasn't going to paint it the copper because A, I, I don't think I have enough copper uh, to do everything. Uh, and B, I want it to be a little bit more rugged than that than just having it being painted. So I'm going to do the entire inside of the cab in bed liner. So it'll be copper where you can see it. It's going to be carpeted um, and so anywhere there's going to be carpet I'm going to bed line it. Maybe it'll make it quieter on the inside. I think it'll make it more durable. So that's kind of what we have going on here. And then the hood, you can see how far I got on the hood before the compressor gave out on me. So maybe I should buy a new compressor. That would probably be a smart thing to do so I don't get into this again and have it uh, die on me. I've been looking to get a really big compressor and uh, maybe maybe that's what I should do. We're gonna keep going so I'm gonna fix the compressor and then uh, I'm gonna finish the underside of the hood and the doors and all that and then um, I'm gonna do this is kind of thrown together so I'm actually gonna put all the the uh, fenders on and get everything relined back up again before I paint the exterior of the vehicle. And we're gonna do maybe a live painting. I, I don't know. Would anybody watch that if we did it live? And uh, God, that's like, I, I calculated how long it's gonna take to do two layers of clear, or two layers of paint, two layers of clear. Um, and, you know, with all of the moving around and stuff. And, and I got to where, um, it was going to take me somewhere along the lines of four hours with the cure time in between. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to watch a live feed for four hours. So I don't know. Maybe I'll just do a video on it. I can't tell. But it's going to be more formal than this because I've been waiting for such a long time to paint this. And uh, so I think I need to do something with it. Also, uh, we bought two more vehicles. And um, one of them drives and I'm driving it now. The other one does not and it's a project vehicle. And it's something that I've been wanting to get into, something that I've been wanting to do, uh, but Mandy had no interest in it. But after I bought the first one, she then got a taste, and now she wants to do the second one as her project. So uh, those are coming up in the future. I'm gonna focus on the Bronco for me right now. We're gonna be doing the other one and kind of filming it as we go, and then I'll uh, throw it out to you and see if you like it or not. We, we are, we're passionate about it, so this is going to be exciting. Uh, stay tuned for the completion of the undersides of these uh, probably in the next day or two. 
That's a wrap for Mod Point 3 Garage. Please subscribe and leave some comments down below. What do you think of this color? What do you think of my painting techniques? Um, give me some feedback because uh, I'm going to continue on this thing. And I'll see you in the next video.